I do. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks to everyone tuning in out there in the world today. Uh, Cigar Chat is also brought to you by Gurkha Cigars. Uh, Gurkha is the manufacturer of the world's finest cigars. Check out that new 93 rated uh, heritage today at your local shop. Robert, I actually just got an email from you. <laughs> I just had an email from you pop up. <laughs> we had some, uh, we yeah, we had a few technical difficulties before the show. Not Robert's fault, by the way. Um, Thank you. Yeah, not your fault. I'm, I'm blaming YouTube, man. Ever since it switched over, it's gotten funky. But anyway, we've got Robert Holt with us from uh, Southern Draw Cigars. Robert, thanks for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. Hey, brother. I'm proud to be back. Uh, it's always enjoyable. Uh, when, I don't, when, I don't, when I'm not on the show and I have to watch it, I get a little bit jealous. So I'm glad to get a little time with you. <laughs> oh, I like that. I, I'll take it. I'll take that. That was a nice compliment. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's been a while. We had you, uh, I think more recently, we had you on our pairing show, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I think it's been a while since we've had you on Cigar Chat, so it'll be good to catch up. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, and we missed you at IPCPR, too. You know, uh, I missed everybody. I missed all the fun. I missed all the hospitals. Uh, I missed time. It was a big collaboration, you know, and uh, I spend time with people in the show is important. Uh, unfortunately for us, we had a lot of unfinished business, and, uh, you know, we emerged from it uh, missing the fun, but being much stronger moving forward. And uh, it's not a it's not a fault of any of us, um, but we had things that needed to be done pre-August 8th, and we wanted to make sure we were going to be around for this show and others. Um, yeah, Robert, I'm having a hard time, man. That, uh, your internet connection, as soon as you started talking, it just sounded like you were underwater. I didn't get any of that. <laughs> Are you still there? Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, a little you bit. Hear me now? Yeah, there we go. Um, huh. Yeah, maybe we'll have to edit. We'll have to edit that part out at the beginning. But um, yeah, we'll see if hopefully your uh, your connection can keep up. We're still live and everybody can still see us. But uh, maybe we uh, we'll see. We might have to edit some of that out. But uh, so you missed uh, IPCPR. You were saying you had uh, a few other things that you guys had to handle. Is that what you're saying? We we you know we wanted to make sure that we were well positioned. Um, before August 8th, that uh, our packaging and our blends and our future releases and promotional, I mean, we have to expect that maybe what we do is all we'll ever be able to do and build on. And uh, we, we, we really came out of it much stronger. And it's going to be a, it's going to be fun next five to 10 years. And that's how much we're committed to, to being in the industry for the long term. Yeah, this connection's tough. Um, I think that if you talk, when you were talking at the beginning, when you were talking a little bit slower, uh, it seemed to pick you up a little bit better. So I don't know if that makes a difference, but we'll, we'll try it. We'll see if we can get through it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I got some of that. So your, your planning is, uh, you, you're planning on those, everything you had to get done before August 8th because of all the FDA regulations and things like that. Um, that put a lot of people behind the eight ball, but I can imagine uh, with a company of your size, and I mean, you guys have stuff that's planned out for the future. Having to to uh, escalate that and bring that, you know, up to the front quicker than anticipated, um, that had to be pretty difficult for you guys. It was a great challenge. Um, we don't have people, right? We're small. <laughs> We're family. we don't have gophers. It's us. And ultimately, it's our responsibility. So uh, we took that seriously. Um, want to have to have pre-market approval for a product. As such, we plan accordingly. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's tough, man. It's, and all, all the FDA stuff. I mean, we've we've talked about it ad nauseum, and still nobody seems to know exactly what's happening. So um, we'll try to move forward. And and so you had a few new things, uh, line extensions, really, uh, at IPCPR. I'm smoking one of them here. The uh, the the Kudzu. Axel, is that how you say it? Correct. Right. Axel. Yeah, and this is a uh, Lancero. It's the same same blend, give or take. It it is the same blend. Obviously, you get to uh, enjoy some different ratios of those tobaccos. Um, it's our first Lancero, um, uh, and it's a six and a half forty. So maybe it's a, a little bit of a unique size for us, but 
for this blend, the Southern draw, the desire for having a good consistent draw, um, this was the right size for us and we're, we're very pleased with it. What do you think? I'm enjoying it. I'm about, uh, I don't know, I'm catching up on about halfway through here, I think, maybe a little less than halfway. Um, fired it up about 25 minutes ago. So should be a good hour, 10, hour, 15 minute smoke. Real nice flavor. A lot of nutty, a lot of nutty and woody notes in there for me is what I'm picking up and I'm really enjoying it. Not, not too much spice, but some richness, um, definitely full flavor and um, very approachable from a flavor standpoint. It's, it's going to have something in there unless you're looking for a big Lajero or Lajero or pepper bomb. Um, anything beyond that, uh, that's, that's not what you're going to find here, but there's definitely a lot of nuance, a lot of flavor, um, a lot of complexity. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's, it falls right into my wheelhouse, like most of your cigars do. Lots of flavor. Wonderful. Yeah, not too over the top with the Lajero and things like that, but uh, definitely a lot of nuance going on. I'm, I was going to pair it with a beer, and so I brought out, uh, brought out a glass. I thought maybe I would go with like a brown ale or a porter or something, and I didn't. And I'm glad that I didn't, because I think that would have been too much. Right. Sometimes we go to that rule of thumb, uh, darker, a squirrel wrap for darker beer, stout sporters. Uh, and I think we discount the complexity of well-aged tobaccos um, that uh, allow us to focus on more than just the spice levels in a squirrel, for example. Um, yeah. That leatheriness. Um, that rich aroma sometimes might be a little uh, uh, little suppressed if we go with a heavier beer or something with a heavier viscosity that really sits on the palate. Uh, and I'm kind of glad you did. I, I, I toy around with parents, as you know. I did the Connecticut with some 10 and 12 percent imperials. And um, I kind of go the other direction. Let's explore it a little bit because you can always go stronger and richer beer, but you can't go less once you started. So well, once you start once this, yeah, once you're committed, you're committed. Um, it, now having <clears throat> had a few minutes to, uh, to, to get used to this flavor profile and enjoy it a little bit, I'm thinking something along the wheat, wheat beer maybe. Um, Allagash White is a beer that uh, pops into my head that might be a nice uh, pairing with it. A little bit of that, uh, get that Belgian yeasty flavor in there. It might be a nice little palate cleanser in between. Nothing too heavy, nothing too strong. Um, even a pale ale, really, that's not too hopped up would be a nice pairing, I think. Okay, a, a pale ale, um, a, um, a lower IBU, IPA, something nice. But as you said, a Belgian or something, a little bit of coriander, just a light spice, just not overpowering, uh, would be a nice compliment to start with. Um, and, and uh, you know, as you get to the final third, as in most of our cigars, the final third you're going to pick up flavor and a little bit of strength on how we load, you know, how we bunch these cigars. So you might be able to step it up into something more on a, uh, an imperial stout or something of that nature that's still a little lighter, a little creamier, but uh, with that last third of that cigar. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, we can jump in. We've got some audience questions here. Um, and Robert, I, I, I'm not sure that we're going to get through this whole show because the, the audio for, when we were talking before the show, the audio was fine. But your audio is really, really choppy. I think it's just the internet connection that you've got there in the hotel. Um, but we'll get through as much of it as we can. And, and uh, we've got some folks watching, so I do want to get to their questions. Um, but I'm not sure that we'll be able to get through the whole show, but we'll do our best. Um, question here from – sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Shoot. Oh, that sounds better. Uh, question here from, uh, from Jeff. He wants to know uh, about the Code Duelo or Code Duelo, which we – we uh, featured yesterday on our uh, pairing show. I did a pairing show with the guys from uh, Developing Palettes, and we did the Code Duelo uh, Firethorn and uh, some whiskey, which was a really, really nice pairing. Um, I started, I, I went with Old Weller Antique uh, 107, Suburban, and it was a little bit spicy, I think. Uh, the the combination of the two cigars, or the cigar and the, uh, the whiskey, was it was okay. It wasn't anything I was too excited about. The second pairing was the uh, uh, Takatsuru Pure Malt, uh, some Japanese whiskey that John sent over to me. A little bit smoother, um, a little bit more, a um, little fruit notes, a little bit more uh, of that uh, sherried spice. 
and that pairing was really good with that Firethorn Cote Duelo. So tell us a little bit about the, the Cote Duelo. Um, well, number one, let's, let's, can you hear me clearer now? Yeah, it sounds much better now. Okay, I moved it closer to the uh, external wall. Uh, it is Code Duello, as in Code. Code, okay. In Code Duello, there's a history with Southern Draw that you'll see the link in a moment. Uh, it's nothing more than a defined rules for one-on-one -on -one combat known as the duel. So the defi def definition of Code Duello is rules for a duel, okay? Um, we live in tough times. We live in a lot of... Uh, um, crisis and constant reminder on a daily basis of how we don't get along yeah. from the military side or coming just from the streets. Right. And uh, really our, our thought of this is code duello goes back um, to the seventh century BC. We can go back to the middle ages um, where there was a set of rules to settle disputes back then, obviously we're using, you know, knives and swords and things of that nature. Um, but that code throughout history, moving into the Renaissance period, for example, um, started moving to more uh, of swords and things to settle disputes, you know. Uh, and it was really not a gentlemanly thing to do at that point in, in, in history. Um, and really, if you think about code duello or the, the, this dual capacity, Queen Victoria was one of the folks that said, listen, that is inhumane, it's barbaric, how about we find a better way of settling disputes? And most people don't realize that uh, boxing originated in that 17th century um, when, uh, um, say 18th century, 18, 1860s, when, uh, when the Marquis of Queensbury rules were developed. Hmm. That was how it was decided that we would settle disputes and duels in a generally format as history progresses over time. It's kind of, kind of, kind of unique but from that we move into the 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 irish code and in other parts of the world where uh, guns now become available and we get barbaric again and now we have to choose weapons that are matched equally that are accurate you know equally accurate and we really fight to the death in that sense um and our thought was that as that moved closer to what southern draw is in the united states um in the south in the united states really a duel class the upper echelon nice satin lined boxes with beautiful dueling pistols we you know back we back to back we take 10 steps we turn around and we shoot into a cloud of smoke somebody dies um and then it really evolved into what we see in the old west the old westerns the quick draw duel wild bill hickok the first ever recorded quick draw duel now you think about one of our lines of cigars which is the quick draw um this is not something that this code to well that we came up with just for this release of these limited pr products, which we'll get into that a little bit, I think, Rob, but it was really educating people that over time we've always settled disputes and we found very barbaric ways of doing it, but we've never found a very humane way. And I don't know about you, uh, in these times, I think if we can offer a pair of cigars that are banded together, um, and you and I can sit down. We've got something in common to start with, and that's really the concept of the tagline is settle it like gentlemen. Obviously, the ladies are welcome too, but settle it like gentlemen, because if you sit down and you're both smoking the same cigar, you got a starting point for that discussion. And that's really the logic behind it. It's more of an awareness. It's really a public service announcement. Settle it like gentlemen, and it's a good start um, to do that. So that's really the concept behind Code Duello. Um, even though we haven't been able to communicate that in the mass to the masses just yet. Yeah, that's that's a really cool idea. And actually, um, Aaron uh, from Developing Palettes was he he gave me kind of a a, a brief rundown on that, um, and, uh, the, uh, and we talked about it a little bit on the show yesterday. But uh, I like the concept, and it's I've seen other cigars uh, on the market that are it's you're buying two cigars at once, whether they're they, and they, they seem a bit more um, gimmicky to me, you know, whether yeah, they're <laughs> – and, I, again, nothing against whatever anybody else wants to do. I'm not judging. It's just with something like this, uh, it's the, the message is a little bit different. Um, and they're great cigars. So the, the way that this works is these are limited uh, sizes, correct? They're the same, 
the same base cigar of the Firethorn and the Kudzu, the same blends, more or less, um, but in limited, uh, a limited edition size? Yes and no. Um, they are limited. To, to go back to what a dual requires, a dual requires multiple options for the participants. Thus, we have multiple options. That, there's a reason we have it. Number one, um, you had the Perfecto 656 Firethorn yesterday. And I think having had the Firethorn in the past, you realize this wasn't as spicy. It was smoother. It was breadier. It was a little sweeter. Um, what we did with the ratios in that cigar is we really created a blend um, with the 656. It's a little more medium body, medium flavored, very sophisticated, very approachable for almost anyone. Now, I think you've smoked the 558, but if you, if you do a pairing with the 558, you're going to find that that red pepper and that depth of, of, of spice and strength is more fuller body in that same cigar. So we've really manipulated the ratio so that they're uniquely different cigars from the original Firethorn, but they're unique to themselves. Uh, and consequently, the kudzu is the same thing. The 656 is really focused on the strength and flavor of the Escuro wrapper. More pepper, more full body, more full flavored in your face, kind of like a double, triple arrow Dominican style. Um, and then if you smoke the 558 kudzu, you're going to really enjoy the oakiness, the char, the woodiness. The aromas are very strong in that cigar. Uh, and there's a little touch of sweetness, thanks to our wonderful Jalapa region that offers us some great sweetness. So we've really manipulated the same tobaccos and created offerings um, in the Code Duello that you can't get in the core line just by buying a, a Robusto Toro or Gordo. Okay, so that, that kind of begs the question, <clears throat> at least for me. Why would, why would you call them the same thing then? Why wouldn't you just make them a totally separate cigar? Why make them the Firethorn and the Kudzu when in essence, they're, they're, they're smoking different. They're, you're going to get some of the same things across the board, but I mean, that could be said about every cigar ever made, right? You're going to get some of the same things across the board. Why not make those their own entity? Uh, great question. Uh, is that your question or is that a viewer question? That's my question. Wonderful question. Woohoo! Um, I think number one is, as a small company, we want to be very mindful <laughs> about, about the blends and the brands that we put into humidors. We want to make sure that we can optimize our space in these humidors. It's expensive real estate. And if someone likes the Firethorn and the Kudzu profiles, um, I believe they're gonna like these limited releases and give them something to look forward to on an annual basis because we don't do gimmicks. We don't do, uh, we would never release Code Duello as it, on its own and only release 4,000 of each one a year. It's not a good economical decision for a company of our size. But it does give you something to look forward to, and that's pretty unique in itself. And consequently, we uh, we released half of them uh, in this in this last four or five weeks since we've shared them with you guys and we've sold 100% of them. For us, is we saved the the other half for the holiday season. So we're going to look at mid to end of November, and uh, we'll have those. But that's really the reason. It's just we want to limit the amount of blends and brands on the shelf. And as customers enjoy those, if they want to uh, order or pre-order or look forward to that fall release of the Code Duellos, they'll be able to do that. That's awesome. So 100%. Good for you. Um, I, I, I can imagine that's the kind of cigar that uh, that if, if folks enjoy your blends and they, they go out and they, they get their hands on that one, they're going to look forward to it the next time it comes out. Because it is, uh, again, I've only had the Firethorn. But, uh, or, yeah. Yeah, Firethorn. Um, but, um, sorry, I, got, I had a, another word in my head, but that's not the name of the cigar. Um, and it was really, really good. I really enjoyed that blend. Um, super smooth, like you were saying, in that ring gauge. Uh, I, I grabbed one and smoked the first one just while I was doing some work. I normally don't smoke while I'm working, but uh, I grabbed one that day. Just I don't know, it just sounded good, and I, I fired one up. And, and I ended up about halfway through, I ended up stopped working, and I just sat back and was focused on the cigar because the blend was so so nice i really really enjoyed it. it it's it sometimes we want a cigar to hold our attention we talk about that in reviews you know it's there was enough transitions to keep me interested that kind of thing but this this one had enough going on where it not only kept me interested but it got me to stop doing <laughs> the other thing that i was doing so I, I think if people do get their hands on it they will look for that one uh hopefully again when it comes out 
uh, like we're saying later in the fall, um, or we're already in the fall, later in, uh, later in um, the wintertime. Um, speaking of wintertime, I've got a question here that, that leads right into that, but I want to remind our audience you're listening to Cigar Chat brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, we're chatting with Robert Holt from uh, Southern Draw Cigars, <clears throat> and we've uh, fixed our audio issues, which is great. Um, I'm glad you were able to move <laughs> to, to the spot that you're in, Robert, because now I can hear you. It's awesome. Uh, this next segment's brought to you by Drew Estate. Uh, check out the new Drew Estate Diplomat app. I'm on it. If you're not on it, as Logan would say, you're just a poser. So uh, check out the Drew Estate Diplomat, Drew Diplomat app. Uh, you can download that anywhere that apps are available. And I believe it's available across all formats. So check it out. Um, we're talking about smoking cigars in winter. And I'm lucky enough to live in the Bay Area out here in California where we don't really have winter. We have kind of, we don't really have a hot summer either. We kind of have a fall and a spring. And that's about it, which is great for me. Um, but some guys, different parts of the country, have a hard time getting cigars in when it gets so cold. Uh, Jason Myers wants to know um, about the quick draw. You know, tell us a little bit about the quick draw. What was your inspiration behind the cigar, uh, or taking that, taking your blends into that cigar? Um, and is there are there any things that you have to do special for that when you get into that blending process? Because you're talking about a smaller ring gauge, and you know you've got to fit those leaves in there. Uh, he says it sounds like a great option for a shorter smoke in the wintertime, and uh, I would agree with that. But uh, give us a little bit of background on that. First and foremost, um, for those that don't know, I, I did have the luxury of living and spending a tremendous amount of time in the Caribbean based in Latin America. Um, but being exposed to uh, so many cigars in the region, what I found myself doing is smoking a lot of smaller ring gauge um, cigars, but I would smoke smaller cigars, less than 50 ring gauge, usually in that five, five and a half um, you know, inch size. Um, and that's where you get to really enjoy great wrappers, right? But you also have to rely on very specific binder and filler because it, there's such a small ratio uh, to them. But I enjoyed them so much. I also find myself, um, I stop at five sh cigar shops on an average day. If I have a cigar with every shop owner, manager, and customer, and I smoke all Toros and Gordos, guys, we'd be in trouble. Um, they'd be very long days. But the concept behind Quick Draw was, A, we always knew we wanted to release three unique blends, what we kind of call morning, noon, and night. The new Connecticut release, we call our morning, our Ecuadorian dark Habano, which is a true medium, leather, woody, not a lot of spice. And then that nice, heavily, aggressively aged and fermented Pennsylvania broadleaf that's really done well. Um, and we knew that we wanted that first one to be in that 30-minute window. The average lunch break, um, the average time that a man can stand out in Casper, Wyoming in December to smoke a cigar, um, it can be smoked in 13 minutes. Um, <laughs> we also wanted to expand on that. So the quick draw line, we've just released a short panatella in all three. So it's a five and a half by 40, which to me is as good or better than the original Petit Corona, but it gives you about a 50 minute uh, smoke. So keep it, you know, ultimately we're going to end up three blends in quick draw, very unique blends, not just wrappers. Um, and we want to keep them in most states, they're $6 or less. Um, and we want to reward people to have a good quality product. And it's as, every bit as good as anything else that we do. Um, it's the best we can do with the tobacco. Um, but yeah, you really want to focus on well-aged, well-fermented wrappers and equally, uh, aged and fermented flavorful binders and fillers. If you want to have a little firecracker that uh, people are going to go to and, and, and enjoy every time they have a break or, a, you know, a 30 minute car ride at home. So that's, that's the concept behind the quick draw. It, it's interesting. Well, first of all, I know John loved the, it was the quick draw Connecticut, I think was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And he gave, rated it a 94 or 95 or uh, just, he that's gave it to pretty respectable for a Connecticut, I think. Yeah. And, and coming from John who really does, John doesn't throw around uh, the, the high ratings uh, like that. So, uh, and I've smoked that. I've, I've smoked the Connecticut. I think that's the only one I've smoked and I really enjoyed it as well. Um, the thing that, that sticks out most to me out of what you said, though, and we're talking about a smaller cigar, and I don't know if this is a stigma in the industry or maybe it's just me, but when I see a smaller cigar, 
I tend to think that they use lesser product for whatever reason. Lesser tobaccos in there. I think maybe it's a short filler. There's, you know, they had they're using the scraps afterwards to put this cigar together, and that's. I mean, I'll be the first to say that that's kind of an uneducated uh, view of that. But you're look, you're talking about it the exact opposite. When you're working on a cigar that's that small, that quick of a smoke, when you really only have a half hour, you're focusing on ultra premium stuff. I mean, you're, you're using the, the, the cream of the crop to make those cigars. Absolutely. And think about it this way. If we made a Toro or a Gordo 6560, like we do in our Kudzu and Firethorn, and that Pennsylvania broadleaf, you're talking about a $14 cigar. Nobody's going to smoke it, brother. Uh, <laughs> we're, I mean, I'm not Jewish states, right? You have our marketing, but you know, I'm just speaking the truth. I, those tobaccos are they're expensive. They're well done, well manufactured cigars that are unique blends that I find that everyone that tries them enjoys. And uh, that being said, um, keeping it in a smaller ring gauge, we accomplish the mission, which is high quality, low cost, and low time commitment, which is what that line's all about. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I like the concept of that. I mean, especially you talk about the price point and, and, and the amount of time that that smokes. The, the short Pantellas, I think uh, you sent us some of those as well. I'm going to have to check those out. I haven't smoked those yet either. Um, I feel like I'm really far behind on things that I need to, uh, that I need to try ever since IPCPR. I'm trying to catch up. Um, so speaking of you know being in the car, you're, you're going from place to place, you've got short breaks, or you're spending a lot of time at uh, different shops. Bob Dog wants to know uh, how, how difficult uh, has it been with all the traveling that you've been doing lately? You've been all over the place. Um, the difficult part is being away from family, being away from my wife and my kid and my neighbors and friends. And I can't tell you the last time I hit a golf ball or cast a fishing line. Those are all very important quality of life things. Um, but the ease of it has been, has been the, uh, time that our, you know, representatives in the field have coordinated, uh, events and they've coordinated shop visits. We've ran into some incredible hospitality. Um, we can all go back and watch videos and do studies of industry that we all recognize today and sleeping on couches and sitting in the uh, front seat of a Volkswagen, uh, Jetta. Uh, when you're six foot three and far overweight, um, sleeping one or two hours a day, it's a joy. It's a true joy. And we get to see the people. You know, Southern Draw as a brand is, again, we've talked about it many times. We want to promote faith, family, and a lot of hospitality. And the only way to do it is to do it firsthand. So um, I, I miss the family, but they're working equally as hard on the back office side as I am on the road. And I uh, get to just meet great people. So we're going to stay the course. And uh, I don't, I don't know when we'll uh, timber that. Uh, we don't have plans. This is an entrance strategy, not an exit strategy. It's hard. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm not good at washing clothes, but guess what I get to do tonight at the hotel? I got I can only turn my socks and underwear in, inside out a few times, and I got to wash them. <laughs> well, you are representing your company. I mean, you, you can't walk in smelling like you're wearing three-day-old underwear, my friend. Not an option. <laughs> I'm, I'm rubbing raw tobacco leaves on my clothes so people think that that's just the cigar. It's, it's very musty. It's very barnyardy, Robert. I was like, yeah, that's broadleaf, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And finding a hotel that has uh, where you can do your own laundry is not I, – I think we did that at IPCPR. My wife, God bless her, she found uh, a hotel for us in, in New Orleans that had, uh, that had a, a laundry facility. But it's not, that's not easy to come by. Um. Well, I typically stay at one chain because we travel enough that uh, they, they comp some rooms and most of them have uh, um, free breakfast, important, in laundry facilities. And uh, um, modern, a lot of the modern chains don't even charge. You know, if you have the laundry done, you pay an arm and a leg. But uh, uh, I know I'm not good at it, but if I can get them clean, I can always iron. I came from the military. I can iron, you know, so... Uh, uh, that's part of the humble, hum, being humble side of the business, I think. <laughs> you did, I bet you didn't think we'd be talking about your laundry tonight, did you? <laughs> well, hotel, you know, and uh, we've got all kinds of events going on the next few days, and I've got a big laundry bag just staring at me over in the corner going, hey, you know, after you get off this uh, cigar chat, you got to go wash me, buddy. And I'm trying to make excuses within myself of why I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, you got to do it. So, um, You've, you said you've got some events coming up in the next few days. Where are you going to be? 
Um, we're going to be in Salt Lake City, which will be the first events in Salt Lake City. Um, we'll be tomorrow afternoon at the Tinderbox um, with uh, Ken and Jonathan. Um, they've been doing very well with us. Um, our financial consultant, family member, friend, uh, Courtney Taylor is also from the Valley. You know, Sharon and I and the kids, we lived in Park City, Utah for some time. So we've got a lot of connections in Utah. Um, University of Utah is our second home as far as sports teams. So we're going to do that event. Um, we're going to a great local sports bar that has built a nice outdoor heated patio in a town that's not known for cigar shops or smoking. They've done a great job creating an environment for us to enjoy. Um, we're doing a, 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 a kind of a little cut and light. You're going to see a lot of the uh, uh, Salt Lake cigar smokers, also the Cigar for Warriors folks. We're going to go to Piper Down, I think. Uh, we're going to probably drink Ballast Point and Piper Down at Piper Down. <laughs> and maybe I think, uh, I think they might have Pumpkin Down by now. So this time last year, we talked a lot about pumpkin beers. Uh, then we're going to do a nice tailgate, and uh, all the raffle winners and the shop owners from the event are going to go to the University of Utah game as they uh, uh, fight out the uh, Kentucky, I mean the Arizona uh, Wildcats. So um, it's going to be a good couple of days. And then uh, I think uh, the Beehive Cigars has just opened their new shop. Spend the next day there with them, and um, I think they just had a big Tatawahi event. So it's hard to follow that up, but. Uh, we're going to go spend some time with them too before I come back to uh, go back to Texas for uh, Stogie's big wean ding. That's, that is uh, that's a mouthful, man. You've, you've got a lot of, you got a lot going on. You mentioned beer in there and you've got a lot of travels coming up. Uh, I want to jump into this next segment. Uh, remind our audience, listen to cigar chat brought to you live on cigarfederation.com broadcast around the world. The armed forces radio network. We're chatting with Robert Holt from Southern draw cigars. This next segment is brought to you by cigar oasis. Uh, everybody uses Cigar Oasis. If you, I bet, I bet, I would bet that most of the shops that you go into uh, probably use Cigar Oasis in their humidors. Um, they're they're the leader in, in uh, cigar humidification. Set it and forget it is their tagline, and that's basically what I do. I just turn them on, and uh, that's it. Just check them every now and again, make sure everything's running right. And you can hook them up to your phone. I'm I haven't done all that yet, but uh, I know a lot of people who do that. So. Uh, check out Cigar Oasis, uh, just CigarOasis.com if you uh, need any information from them. Um, so about, so how often, how many weeks out of the year do you spend on the road on average? Um, unfortunately, I don't look at the calendar as a year. I look at it uh, uh, month to month and usually in blocks of two weeks. Um, I drive a lot, but uh, we're talking about 80% plus on the road. If I look at the numbers, it might be upwards of 90 percent because you have to add, you know, travels down to the factory and things as well. So um, this last year, um, it's probably 90 percent. If I'm home a day or so, remember, we have an office. My wife runs all that. We have accounting and things that we have to do. Um, but uh, <clears throat> here's what I do, Rob. We've got reps in covering 30 or plus states. I give them the calendar in December and January and say, fill it up. And uh, they get me a week to 10 days at a time to cover areas of their territory. And in that time, we try to do multiple events that are separated geographically and see as many current accounts and prospective accounts as we can. Plus, we do a lot of you know charity events, as you know, and music venues and beer pairings. But uh, the calendar is for them to use my time wisely. I'm at their disposal because they're, they're relationships. They've earned them over time. And I'm just there to support that, right? So uh, probably 75% of my travel is coordinated by the uh, by the, by the the brokers and, and sales staff. And it truly is a labor of love, isn't it? Oh, it, it has to be. Um, you know, we're in this because we chose to be in it. I, I enjoy it. I'm willing to do it because my wife's doing it with me. Um, I'm excited. Said it on the show with you before. We will never discount that. Um, but we're truly trying to build something that'll last um, generations. And uh, we've got our challenges. Everybody does. Um, but we're we're committed. And I think the more that people see us, um, as we say, uh, through social media or through participation. Um, they're going to realize that it's not just some guy that wrote a couple of checks and put a label on a cigar. We're not that. That's not what this brand is. is. And, um, 
you know, every time we get to spend time with you guys in the Cigar Media Association, every time we get a rating or a review, um, it, it's all it's all important. It's all important part of this process. So I appreciate it. But that's 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 how we roll. You know, we're going to stay busy. We say stay stay uh, stay active and stay positive. Yep, stay on course too. Absolutely. Um, so you were talking about beer. You talked yeah. about Ball- you talked about Ballast Point. Now you had an event that you were talking about that was going to be at Ballast Point. Is it is that this year or did that already happen? Um, or is it in San Diego? Yes. I should say. No, um, about three weeks ago we did uh, the big Ballast Point anniversary party at Del Mar Fairgrounds. That's the one. I think. Oh, but uh, I can tell you this: there were forty or fifty beers on tap four or five tractor trailers uh, hmm. root, roots flew in and performed really uh, wow and your friendly southern draw team was there enjoying uh beer with uh steve anderson which is head of their barrel aging program plus all their other wonderful you know core lines and all their seasonals and limited production uh a very long day um and i do need to check because they were they were scheduled for another event a barrel aged event here in about 10 days and i just know it conflicted with uh jorge's event down in houston which we would we could and would never miss um but let me check on that now that you jog my memory and see because uh i had told them to reach out to you guys and invite you down uh for that if they were trying to make sure legally that they could have it at the brewery so oh i see okay i will follow up uh, because the event that they're that's pending is at the brewery and it's all barrel age um phenomenal I mean, mind-boggling quality of beer that uh, Steve and his team have produced. So let me get back to you on that after we hang up, and I'll uh, check out because you definitely will want to go to that. Yeah, that's yeah, barely. You're speaking my language. Um, they've they, yeah, they have some great stuff uh, coming out of Ballast Point. You mentioned the uh, the Piper Down, and then they, they have the the pumpkin, but they also did the Piper Down Oktoberfest. And this, I know it's been around for a few years. This was the first time that I saw it was this year. I thought it was fantastic. Absolutely, really good. Um, it's a, it's a unique take on an Oktoberfest style beer, uh, but for a guy in the cigar industry, it was perfect because I could not cut and light a cigar that didn't work with it, which means it's got a lot of elements. It's got a lot of underfla- uh, underlying nuances, just a beautiful beer, not overspiced. Um, it's just, it's, it's got such complexity that I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, we, uh, it was a, we paired it. We did an Oktoberfest show with the Casada Oktoberfest. We do that every year and had Terrence on the show. Terrence is a great guy. Loves his beer as well. But uh, that one was my favorite of the night. And I've revisited I picked up another six-pack of that. It's <clears throat> Oktoberfest beers for me. This is my favorite time of year for beer because you start getting into the barrel-aged stuff and uh, and those types of things. You get on the more malty side of things. Uh, I, I love uh, hoppy beers and hop bombs and I celebrated my Giants victory last night with the Pliny, uh, Pliny the Elder, because one of my favorites. And boy, that was a stressful game, man. Whew. I went through. I, uh, yeah, I, I could only imagine what you were going through. <laughs> you know, the, the room I was in, everybody was rooting for you. And I mean, what a way to go out. Of course, my Rangers got crushed today in game one, and I'm pretty depressed about that. I'm trying to smoke my way through it. But, <laughs> uh, but both of the, uh, both of the uh, playoffs, um, ended in dramatic fashion. Pretty impressive. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I, I actually was uh, on the phone with my dad a little bit earlier today, and he said, I'm just watching the game. I said, which game are you watching? I didn't realize they'd started so early. And he said, yeah, the, the Blue Jays are winning 6 to nothing. I said, you got to be kidding. That's going to be an interesting series. I, I think that that one's going to go all five. And uh, But I, I, I just feel like Texas has has the pitching to get through that series. Um, so, well, we, But it should be. He, he – didn't pitch like Hamels. You pitched like Robert Hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you're gonna. You'll, I think you're gonna get another start out of him. You bring him back in Game Five and uh, Game Four, maybe Game Five, and and see how that goes. But um, yeah, I, I think I went through in the game last night. I went through a uh, Luponic Distortion Number Two IPA from Firestone Walker, then a Three Way IPA from. Uh, it's a collaboration that Fort George does, which is a really really good beer up out of, uh, uh, up near Cannon Beach uh, in Oregon. And then I uh, did a Blind Pig, Russian River Blind Pig IPA, which is also one of my favorites, and then to cap the night off with, uh, my wife was helping me with these, by the way, and uh, I capped the night off with the, uh, the Pliny the Elder. 
Uh, and, I, no, I, we share in my household. We, we definitely share. My wife likes the she likes the IPAs for sure. Um, it, Jason Myers wants to know what are some of your favorite pairings uh, with Southern Draw cigars. He says I found that the uh, the Kudzu actually holds up pretty well to some IPAs uh, that can be difficult to pair with. So he's curious to see what are some of the pairings that you like. Um, what are my all time favorites? I'm going to start with the Firethorn. Um, is Funky Buddha IPA. Mm. The citrus and the dried citrus, it was the richest of that dried citrus, that light white pepper, light spice. It was a pretty heavy IBU, I mean, pretty high. Um, and I believe that's out of Atlanta, is it not? Uh, yeah, they're, they're um, I know they're- out of, out of Florida, it, it's out of Florida. They're definitely uh, in the Southeast. I've never tried anything from Funky Buddha. I've heard really good things, but I haven't tried them. It's just, it's, it's just a phenomenal pairing, but Look up the Funky Buddha IPA Firethorn Robusto because of how that 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 cigar burns. Perfect pairing. Um, Kudzu's is a is a another animal because I do this time of year tend to go to darker beers. My wife actually doesn't like IPA. She loves stouts, and if it was just one stout, she would just drink Guinness. Um, but um, um, the Seasonal Victory at Seas by Ballast Point are one, some of my favorite beers to pair with the Kudzu. It's uh, and they've got numerous ones, but every one of them seemed to hit the note perfectly. I would look that up. Um, and then uh, the quick draw, Connecticut, th that Connecticut blend. Um, I thought I had some favorites. The other day I was in Denver and I stopped early Sunday morning um, to go to a business meeting, which in fact had to do with we were going to drink beer, smoke cigars and watch the Broncos, right? Coca Pelly Brewery in Westminster. They have a... Um, Ripa, Coco Pelli Ripa, is a phenomenal beer to pair with uh, with our Connecticut. Um, that would be my recommendation. And then, you know, some of my all time favorites again. Uh, you know, Prairie Bomb. Uh, obviously, not everybody can get it, and if they can, you know, uh, it's one thing. But if you really want to go with a PA, uh, I would go with Terrapin out of uh, go with Terrapin out of Athens, Georgia. And uh, they also have a, a, another one, a Hoppinator, I think is what it's called. Um, but that and my little broadleaf just seems to work just so well together. Uh, it's kind of cozy. It's a warm beer. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a lot of nice bitterness, and it's, we, we counter that with that natural sweetness of that, of that broadleaf. You realize most people that have smoked it realize it's a very rich, sweet, bold Maduro versus a peppery, black, gritty type of uh, Maduro. So those are some of my, my favorites. Um, and of course, you know, the beers are one thing. I, I love my bourbons and rice and uh, scotches as well. And we've got a whole nother show to do with that sometime, I think. Yeah, you uh, <clears throat> you named uh, off an awful lot of really good beers there. Uh, the the Victory at Sea, just the, the standard Victory at Sea, and that's a, a porter and it's aged with coffee and vanilla bean, I believe. And it is just a phenomenal, phenomenal beer that you can that's readily available you can find it all the time it's not a hard beer to find um i know they also released nationally they did the the peppermint version um but i, right. I see on some of these these lists at their events that they've got rum barrel aged and bourbon barrel aged and uh and all this stuff and i'm just thinking man i would love to try some of those they don't bottle any of it and, and occasionally they'll have like a tap takeover or something like that at a place near me and uh you know, I try to get out when I can, but usually those are the first ones to go. So on those, that list of the extensive list of those that they do, especially locally, if you're, if you're anywhere near Ballast Point down there in San Diego, you can find a ton. But uh, that's, those are, almost all those beers are on my list that I would just love to get my hands on. It's, it's just difficult unless you're in the area, you know? Well, we'll see. We'll see if we know somebody down there. We'll, we'll check. <laughs> No, I, I've, I've got to make a trip down there. The, the wife and I, maybe this uh, sometime this winter, uh, get away from the weather and get down to San Diego where it's always, what, 75 degrees or whatever it is down there. You know, there's so many breweries, you don't really even have to go outside. So it doesn't matter. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll set you guys up. We've, uh, we've got uh, not only partners in Southern Draw that, that are in the industry, um, but uh, they're, the, they're great beer guides. Um, and they know what, you know, they know what's in the back room. 
you know, that's not out on the tap. And that's always good. You know, things like Victor at Sea are so versatile. It's like playing a game of air hockey. You know, you just smoke, you take a little draw in your cigar and you slide that puck back across there and they hit you with another flavor and slide it back. And it's, it, it's, it's never ending as far as the experiences go. It's, it's, it's such a unique beer um, that uh, it almost works with any cigar, but uh, I find something different in it every time I drink that beer. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I feel like I've, <clears throat> I've we feature that on our pairing show at least two or three times. Uh, just a phenomenal beer, um, and I'm trying to think. I know we did a, a pairing show with you, and I can't remember what uh, what beers it was that we paired with. But you guys, uh, you you and John focused more on Belgian whites and wit beers because it was that's right. Genetic. Really, I didn't really uh, warn you ahead of time that I was going to go big. But I wanted to show the 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 um, um, flexibility of that Connecticut giving the it's not a, it's just not a traditional Connecticut by flavor profile by strength by body it's not and I went with uh, I went with a tri uh, Imperial IPA I went with uh, Reverend so I did a triple uh, and I think I did a quadruple um, in that in that in those three beers which consequently I drank all three bombers on the patio. And after the show, Miss Sharon, we uh, popped a few more so that we could do the pairing together on the patio after the show. So uh, I slept like a baby. <laughs> You're right. We did. I, and it's funny. I think I actually had Allagash White um, on that show. And uh, I, I did a, uh, another uh, a, a wit from, oh, man, I can't remember it. I can see the can, but I can't remember the company. But that's right. We went in, you went in a very different direction. And, uh, and, and I think most of the pairings still worked out pretty well. That's that's one of the things that uh, um, I've learned from doing that pairing show is most of your preconceived notions about pairing, wrong. They, 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 you're you're pretty much wrong. Yeah, I mean, I go into a show and I think, okay, well, I've got this this uh, nice heavy Maduro, and I've got this barrel aged, uh, I don't know, KBS or something from Founders, and and I think it's going to be great. It ends up just being so much flavor that's just it's it's fighting for your palate and it, it ends up, you end up missing out on the cigar, you're missing out on the beer. Um, sometimes going uh, the opposite route is, uh, is a better way to go, go with something a little bit more delicate and, and hopefully those, those flavors really can uh, <clears throat> elevate each other, um, if you will. So with, we've got about, about eight or nine minutes left. Um, so what, what can we look forward to from Quick draw in 2017. I mean, it's we're getting towards the end of uh, the end of 2016, and I mean, granted, it's it's tough with new releases and things, but I know that you probably got some stuff up your sleeve. Is there anything that you can share with us? I can, but and it, while everybody was at the show, we released some press releases, and most people didn't read them because they were engaged in the things in front of them. But um, a couple of exciting things are. Uh, we'll be releasing our first core line, Connecticut. Um, that is the uh, Rose of Sharon. It's going to be a very well-aged, very velvety, beautiful Ecuadorian Connecticut. Um, Cubano Piloto binder and a very unique uh, uh, set of fillers. It creates a nice medium body Connecticut. It's a box press. Um, I don't think we've decided which Vitolas, but if we follow what we've done in the past, you'll probably see it in the Robusto Tour of Bordeaux first. Um, and uh, that's an exciting cigar um, for us because it'll be our first Coraline Connecticut, which, are, which should hit a lot of people in, the, in, their, in their sweet spot that, that uh, like mild and medium body cigars. It's got a lot of depth and flavor as well. Uh, but maybe the most exciting, uh, uh, Triple Maduro, it's a... Coraline Broadleaf, San Andreas, nice Esteli Lajero. Um, it will compete with any double, triple Lajero Dominican cigar that you've ever put on your tongue, but it has the complexity and richness and aromas of Nicaragua that just haunt me. And it's, I'm not saying anything about anybody else. I'm just talking about Robert Holt's palate. Um, and, and it's, you know, one of the lines that we actually have in the warehouse in, in Dallas right now. Uh, but that Jacob's Ladder is going to be exciting. Um, and keep in mind that um, part of what we registered and part of what we did produce, import, pay as chip, sell and market kind of quietly um, that's in the catalog is the kudzu. We'll see a line extension next year or the next year, um, which is the Bellicoso Fino. 
which the fire thorn will also see a five and a half. Uh, it's just a, another beautiful cigar and another size that just really highlights the profiles of these two blends. Um, and then as we grow that Rose of Sharon and uh, Jacob's Ladder, they'll also get their annual Code Duellos. They'll also get their Lanceros and they'll also get their, uh, their uh, uh, Bella Cosa Fino as well. So they'll, you'll end up with four core lines with two of which are the limited production perfectos each year. Um, and then the quick draw line, um, despite what I wanted to do, uh, Rob, I really wanted to release a, uh, a uh, uh, small perfecto, very uh, diplomatico style in, that, in, in, in the quick draw line. But the other two Vitolas and what we've done with them, we're going to reward the folks that have supported quick draw. We're coming out and releasing a Corona Gordo in the same price point in our broadleaf or dark habano and our connecticut in the quick draw line oh, wow so so you've been busy you've that's man to think about when when all that stuff hits and your catalog is pretty much going to cover everything and i know that's not an accident I, I i mean that's that's it's good planning but it's it's impressive the blessing uh, more than it is an accident um we also have a very strong and growing, quietly, private label program. Uh, anything that we had available to us that uh, we had plans in the future, if we decided it wasn't ready to put a Southern Draw band and a brand and to market to promote it actively, um, we did produce those and market those, and we have created a very solid line of private labels as well uh, with its own catalog, which put it of where we've marketed and sold that. But we wanted to make sure that the customers that had them were excited, that they looked at them at the same quality, at a good price point and good margin. And it really is a nice compliment to those people that support Southern Draw. And it's not to be pompous. I know we're not big enough to be considered doing private label, but we've had customers come and ask for it. Thus, we did the work and we got it prepared pre-August 8th. And, and we're excited about uh, the growth of that side of our business as well. And over time, we'll, we'll share a little bit time about that program and some of the exciting brands that we put out on the market that uh, most people don't know or Southern draw. Interesting. Yeah, that'll be a, I'm, I'm curious to, to have all that information divulge to us because I mean, everything that I've smoked from, from your, your catalog has, has been pretty well in my, in, in my wheelhouse, you know, a lot of flavor, nice complexity, always good construction, which is key. And always good balance. I, if, I feel like balance is something that you guys focus on. And there's some companies really do focus on balance and some, in my opinion, don't. Uh, and the, the, more that, that, the more cigars that I smoke and the, as I grow as a smoker or age as a smoker, I guess you could say, uh, balance becomes more and more important to me. I, I don't want something that's too sweet or too peppery or too earthy or too woody. I want that nice balance of a little bit of everything. And sure, things are going to skew in one direction or the other, depending on the profile and the, you know, the wrappers that are using all that. And I get all that, but um, you know, a cigar going in, in one direction that's got uh, you know, a little bit more meat to it, so to speak, I, I still want that balance in there. And, and that's something that I've always found in your cigars. So I, that's something I've always appreciated under your cigars as well. I appreciate that. I mean, the entire brand, we appreciate it. I mean, Going into this, my palate, you know, I've enjoyed cigars now for 21 years, but I truly enjoy a cigar that has, as you said, balance of strength, flavor, and aroma. But that underlying complexity and richness, maybe that's not available in a single profile cigar, full body, full flavor, uh, or just a mild or, you know, mild body, mild flavored cigar. Um, we start with a medium body on almost everything we do, and then we go medium, medium medium full. I mean, it, we really try to create something that we have something for everyone. Um, but in the end, it, it's uh, the collaborations that we have. It's the relationships. Our size, we've been blessed more than we deserve. I think everybody can taste it in the quality and the construction. It's going, it's not Robert Holt's show. It's we've got a lot of people that have invested time and money and energy and resources that said, we're going to get behind you. We're going to give you the best of what we have. And so that's important, but you know, to leave it with a message of what this brand's doing is our goal is really twofold. We want to create a um, uh, consistent line of cigars and we want to be sustainable with our brand. We want to make sure that we have that 
consistency. And we want to be sustainable in everything we do. And we don't want to do anything that we can't do uh, over the long term. And that's why we limit, you know, um, how many how many blends and how many Vitolas we have because we hope that that is enough arrows in the quiver for the future. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate your approach uh, to the business. And uh, we've had a chance to chat with you a few different times. And it's always fun chatting with you. We've just got a few minutes left here. Um, so uh, good luck on the rest of your trip. I know uh, hopefully you get some laundry done. Cause that's, that's important, man. And parents is, appearance is a big deal. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, get, I, I'm out of, I'm past my prime. I don't know about you, but I'm past my prime. So I've got to have sharp, fresh shirts and pants and boots because that's the only way they'll take their attention off the other things. But yeah, man can never have too much luck. So I appreciate that. Uh, we're really excited about these next few days in Utah because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just not known to be cigar friendly, but it is. And there's a great following. There's great people and they deserve uh, reps and owners to go there and spend time with them too. So if I urge uh, some of the other brands that are up and coming, you need to go to Utah. It's small, maybe out of the way as far as the market goes, but it's uh, it, it's worth it. It's rewarding, and, and they're going to follow your brand everywhere you go if you do that. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, last few minutes here, let everybody know where they can find you online. And do you guys have on your website a, a place where uh, folks can search to see uh, shops in the area that, that carry uh, quick draw or uh, uh, sorry, uh, Southern draw. Yeah. And I'll answer those in order. So it is Southern draw cigars.com. Um, on Facebook, it is Southern draw Instagram and uh, Twitter is SD cigars. Um, on our website, we do have a list of retailers and each one of those in the, we don't have them all updated quite honestly. We we're growing fast enough that it's kind of tough, but what you'll find on that is, uh, is their live link, um, whether it's a review from Cigar Federation or whether it's a retailer um, and it's done by state, when you click on it, it's going to take you to their homepage. You're going to see their address. You're going to see their marketing and their promotion. And ultimately, they're your brands. The retailers have their brands. You guys have your brands. And our job is to push them back to this, the, point, uh, the, the point of origin. Uh, so that is on Southern Draws, uh, SouthernDrawsCigars.com. Thank you for asking Awesome, yeah, because that's uh, that's one of the questions that we get from uh, from folks around here is you know where to find your cigars. So, uh, and and I'm sure if uh, anybody has any questions, they can reach out to you directly on Twitter, Instagram, anything like that, and you guys will get right back to them, of course. I think you'll find that um, unless it's something facetious, um, we respond to every inquiry, every message, almost daily, um, and 90% of those I do, and they probably get tired of it, but uh, that's how we've delegated the authority right now. Um, uh, I do that, but. Uh, if it's a message on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, I'm going to see it and I'm going to respond to it um, as promptly as I can. It's usually pretty quick. Awesome. Awesome. Appreciate it, Robert. Best of luck, man. Uh, good luck with the rest of the trip. Hope you get home soon to see uh, the family. And, uh, you know, good luck at these uh, events and football. I mean, you got beer and football and cigars. That doesn't sound like a bad weekend, though. I'm not, I'm not shedding a tear for you, man. <laughs> well, I, 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 I hope people feel sorry for me. This is all homework. I appreciate it, Rob. I missed you, John. I uh, look forward to seeing and visiting with you guys again soon. And uh, I look forward to hearing after you smoke those new uh, short Panatella quick draws as well. Uh, be blessed, brother. Absolutely. Uh, everybody out there in the Armed Forces Radio Network, uh, I tell you this every week. You guys are built to do something I'm not built to do. And I have the utmost respect uh, for you guys and everything that you do, putting your life on the line to fight for our freedom around the world. I hope that you were able to uh, relax for an hour and uh, – Enjoy a cigar with us. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, you can find us on CigarFederation.com. Everybody have a great weekend and stay safe. All right, so we're still live. That's the end of our Armed Forces Radio segment. And I'm glad that we were able to get the audio to work. John will edit some of that stuff out at the beginning. Um, but that was great. This is, it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy hanging out with you, Robert. I, I did miss you guys at IPCPR. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, at an event sometime soon, we can uh, – we can uh, get to meet in person and, uh, and and spend some time together. Maybe share a cigar and uh, and uh, and have a beer together. It'd be nice. Oh, absolutely. We'll do it. Yeah, it's uh, we were pretty devastated, and you know, investing the time and the money and the plans. And uh, most people don't know that we were uh, partnering up with uh, 
Leaf and uh, Mombacho in that space, and it would have been a great uh, environment to enjoy cigars and conversation there at the show. It was, uh, but again, pride aside, I think we took care of our, 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 our work that we needed and it helped us, but uh, we'll make up for it next year, you know, and in between now and then we're going to, we're going to, uh, see folks at more and more events and uh, it's uh, we'll, we'll make up for it you know we'll make up for lost time and uh, we'll definitely drink some beers uh, hey. homework yeah you gotta do. yeah you're making up for it already man you're on the road 90 percent of the time nobody's gonna fault you for that i you know i, I was asking around at ipcpr because <clears throat> it felt like it was a little bit of a thinner crowd as far as uh, manufacturers are concerned and uh i mean the big guys are there and they're always there and they've got the pomp and circumstance and the huge boots and all of that but uh, I think the average person, and maybe even the average retailer, doesn't realize the investment that goes into it on your end. I mean, monetarily, of course, but I mean, just to get in the door, you're you're cutting a pretty hefty check, I imagine. But uh, I mean, you got to get the booth set up, and you've got to have people help you set it up. You got to get your product there. You got to get your product home. It's just there's so much that goes into an event like that um, that I, th I think that the folks cruising around and looking for deals and and even uh, from a media standpoint, we're walking around, we want to get interviews and talk about the new product and stuff. I think we take for granted that uh, everybody's just going to show up, but it's, it's a difficult, uh, a difficult task. Yeah, it, it's uh, the logistics and planning beyond just the investment. You know, we made the investment, but didn't get to go. And um, that's unfortunate, but you know, what I heard this last year, not, not being there is from all the, boutiques and smaller manufacturers, smaller factories that, that we are in contact with, they had incredible years. They were excited. Uh, they did well. Um, there was a new found love, I think, of, the, of our side of the business, the boutique side. Obviously, the big guys are going to get their love and they're going to throw their, spend their big deals out there and they've earned it. God bless them. Uh, but the smaller companies that couldn't throw big deals still got the orders and they still made contact and they still you know, built on those relationships. And it was exciting to hear that uh, the year went that well for most of these folks. I mean, there's a lot of back orders out there, brother, and they're, they're not ours because <laughs> we weren't there, but uh, 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 people took more orders than they had anticipated. So I think it was worth uh, the investment. And it's also more important, I think, that most of these companies, it may be the only time of year where their sales team and their office team and administrative staff, marketing staff all come together. They get to have their annual meal together and celebratory meal and they get to hang out and smoke cigars outside of selling or, or maybe so um, don't discount the value that if we retreat that's not a bad one to go on yeah absolutely and, and there's definitely value there it's just the just from a legwork standpoint it's it, it's it's tough and, and i can uh it's I don't know. I felt like uh, I had more conversations geared in that direction this year, and maybe it was just eye-opening for me because I was one of those people who just took it for granted that everybody would just show up. And uh, right. but I, I heard the same the same that you did. Uh, I, you you probably uh, hear a little bit more of it than I did, but um, the uh, the retailers who were there were spending money and they were they were putting new stuff on their shelves, and and it almost felt like a renewed interest, like you were saying, in uh, in boutique uh, boutique brands and. Um, it's kind of like that thing where when, when your toy almost gets taken away from you, all of a sudden you want that toy again. And, and maybe that the idea of uh, some of these smaller companies not being around in a few years uh, is the kind of thing that, that open up some eyes for uh, retailers to say, hey, there's some really good stuff out here. We need to get this in our shop. So um, I think it was uh, it was the, the first day of IPCPR was rough. The, uh, the mood, at least for me, the, the mood in the building was tough. Um, but uh, day two and day three, it definitely had a lot more energy, and, and I think it was a successful show. But, uh, again, hopefully we'll see you there in the future. Um, we've got through all of our audience questions, so I think we'll just wrap it up. But, uh, again, Robert, I appreciate you taking the time, man. Oh, man, my pleasure. I, I, I'm glad you thought of me the other day. and um, I was driving down from Fort Collins uh, meeting up with the Cigar Society guys up there, and, uh, boy, oh, boy, I tell you what, if you ever – get over into the work college or Denver and find yourself on a Tuesday night. Let me tell you something. Go to Edwards or in Fort Collins on Tuesday nights because those guys are not only uh, scotch and whiskey connoisseurs, but a couple of them, I believe, are uh, distributors. Wow. So they come with bags full of things you've never had, never heard of, and that you need to. So uh, first of all, you should, you should find your way there and find yourself. We'll get you an invite. But uh, what a great bunch of guys up there at that shop that uh, uh, kind
kind of ended that night well for us. Up, up in Fort Collins, what was the name of the shop you said? It's Edwards uh, Pipe and Cigar. They've been uh, a long, around for a long time. Um, that's Jim and Brother Paul uh, is a highly energetic young guy that really knows his cigars. Um, it's um, um, kind of the home for T Mr. T.L. Johnson. T.L. Johnson Cigars. He lives right down the road. But uh, Tuesday Night Cigar Society, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an experience. They're good guys. <laughs> That sounds awesome. That sounds great. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, Robert, appreciate it. We'll let you go so you can uh, get your laundry done and, and uh, get some sleep before you hit the road again tomorrow. Thanks for taking the time. Guys, thanks for checking out another Cigar Chat. Really do appreciate it. We'll be back uh, next week with, uh, oh man, I usually have Logan or John here to tell me who the guest is for next week, but they're, they're not. So we will have a guest next week. I'm just not sure who it is off the top of my head. I apologize. But you can find us at CigarFederation.com. Be sure to download your Cigar Federation app. If you don't have that yet, and uh, everybody have a great weekend, stay safe, and we'll see you on uh, CigarFederation.com.